So I've made a huge mistake on my 7.3 Godzilla. I was probing around under the hood. I was trying to pass through this wire, through this nipple in here on the other side. I ended up using this side. It's a lot easier to reach it. But over on the other side, you cannot see what is behind it. As I was going through it, I accidentally punctured a wire harness on the other side. And it caused a short, it caused the uh, trailer brake to go out on the truck. And I ended up just having to replace a fuse and got everything back up and running, but I can't just leave the truck like this. I have to tear this thing apart and figure out what was damaged, patch it up, and put it back together. If the harness was damaged too bad, which I don't think it was damaged too bad, then I'll have to freaking buy a new harness. It's going to cost over $1,300. This harness is massive. I'll show you guys once I tear it apart how bad or how big this harness is, but it starts there at that nipple where that pass-through is and it wraps around it ties into our main fuse box goes all up underneath the radiator and then it ultimately terminates over here where you have all these connections so yeah it's a huge deal and this goes down in history as the worst thing i've ever done to my truck or to a truck it's to damage like a main harness like that this is like a uh, huge learning experience and when it happened I knew I was taking a risk I was thinking you know this is very risky I would never do that to a customer's truck or anything but I was at home and I was being a little let's just be honest a little reckless so if you want to if you want to tear me up in the comment section I completely understand lay it on me say what you will but I'm going to tear this down tear this truck down and fix it even though everything's working like it should the last thing I need is to be out there plowing snow and have something like the trailer brake go out oh my goodness that could be a disaster so I'm gonna pull this all apart and see the extent of the damage do I need to replace the whole harness or can I just repair the harness well we're gonna have to find out so let's go ahead and jump right into it all right so I guess I'll film some of this uh, my microphone's dead I wonder the difference in audio quality if there's gonna be any wind noise or anything like that but I gotta remove the battery and battery tray in order to get to what I'm getting at but got my Tim Millie here let's go ahead and run these out getting started with the process of just removing all this these have to go I believe this might have to go I'll take it off just because I'll reinstall this here so don't get lost um, then we'll take our negative all right let's get enough this here this negative terminal represents the snow plow that's added here. So that one just gets set aside. Again, reinstall so I don't lose these. Alrighty. Negative terminal, off she goes. Uh, it's always good to take the negative off first, right? That way, you can't arc. It takes positive off, it hits anything. The whole truck's grounded. So, but yeah, basically, uh, how all this happened? It was freezing cold out, and I'm outside working, wrenching, and I'm rushing, and uh, I'm pressed on time, and I'm just taking unnecessary risk, and yeah, cause some uh, damage to my own truck. It's all about patience and getting yourself into a good state of mind so that you can uh, do a good job. We got an eight milli for this one, because I think this. I think this ground strap's gonna be in the way. This is a aftermarket. This one's aftermarket. It may be hard to tell, but I this is one that I made up. Looks looks super clean though. Almost OEM. Uh, so anyway. I'm not sure if this ground strap will have to yeah, actually probably will this one. Because it's gonna probably hinder some things so I'll take them both off all right uh, that was the eight milli gotta get back to the ten millis quick switch all right so yeah I'm uh, putting myself under all this pressure in order to 
get this all done and uh, ended up taking an unnecessary risk and causing some damage and uh, there's our negative so it looks like I'm gonna need a push pin puller which I don't seem to have that right here battery strap my 250 actually needs a new battery and I'm kind of uh, curious what battery I should get one of the things you know I don't want to go crazy on batteries but one thing that actually might be a good idea to look into is something that doesn't leak acid uh, all that acids come out of that battery and uh, it's caused corrosion on our battery strap on that truck so with this truck being new maybe I'll move these batteries over and uh, to the 250 and maybe I'll get some brand some brand new batteries to go and this truck that don't leak because this truck's still nice under the hood so i don't know but then again i don't know if i even want to keep this you know it's, a, it's it's been good so far but i do want the diesel again so the battery's coming out already she heavy all right and then uh a lot of the batteries out the tray's got to come out as well and I do need my push pin puller, but can I get this without it? Nah, I should probably get it. I don't want to break nothing else. All right, got my push pin puller. See if I can get this out without breaking it. One of the things I did is I really warmed up this truck before attempting this and attempts to avoid any broken push pins. But these ones, ah, I broke. It kind of comes with the territory with these ones. They just, they are one time use. You put them in and that's it. So this wire, this is added. I want to put this actually under my tray, I think. So you can't see it. And I didn't have the tray out when I did it. So I guess it's a good time to do so. Uh, I believe these are 13s. I'm not sure though. Let's see. Nope, they're definitely not. Maybe they are. Let's see. They are 13s. Okay. All right. Battery tray. Ripping these right out. Oh yeah, we've got our items mounted to our battery tray here. So uh, maybe, what else is tied into that? This here, this fuse, go, this fuse alone powers the breaker here. What else is tied into that? Is it just the one thing there? I wonder. Should I pop these tabs off of here? Let's set this over. This one has a tab too. If I can get in there, I need something small. Maybe this I would get in there and push it. Yep. This is a big fuse. So yeah, that's good. Let's uh, do that because it's tied into the other battery. And then I can get this tray out of here. Super easy, it looks like. On the diesels, there's like no room for the tray to come out. So you gotta fight with it. But this one seems like it's giving up the boost a lot easier than it does on a diesel. Not bad. Alright, that's out. The tray is out. Now you can now you can maybe see down in there some of the guts all right so when you look in here 
I don't know if you can see that, but there's basically a lot of your snow plow wiring. It just hangs out up in here. So yeah, this is the thing though. This guy, this guy's got to come out and I've never taken that out before. So that's going to be the challenge for me is what all is holding this, this uh, big fuse box in here. All right, so I guess I'll figure that out real quick. So I did end up pulling the uh, fender liner out real quick so I could get full access and full visibility. You can see the snowplow install. Those are the uh, those are the um, relay boxes. They're in their weather sealed containers, and I really like how I just glued these on here with this adhesive tape. But one of the things I do want to notice or point out is that even with the liner in, these are wet. Like they're wet. I don't know how they're getting moisture down to them. They're, don't get me wrong, they're weather sealed, not a problem, but the fact that moisture can get into this area is very interesting. So we'll see how that holds up over time. Uh, you can see a little bit of tape. It's probably hard to pick up on camera, but there's some clear sealer tape right there to keep moisture out of this. So something's definitely going on there. But I'm hoping the plastic liners help with moisture getting in this area. And you look at this section here, I don't wouldn't want moisture getting up in there so I'm gonna go ahead and pull my module out this is where my uh, snow plow module is right there I'm gonna pull that out and uh, this is the plug that I got to remove right up in there so I'm almost there almost got this out okay so I've been uh, taking uh, everything off and wiggling this thing around a little and it looks like it's pretty much out this is gonna be a pretty fun little puzzle to put back together so that's that. This is out. So, slowly making our way to be able to remove this plug. So this is uh, free here. This doesn't come off. These don't actually come off of here. These, they, I think they stay in there. You know what? There's probably a screw holding these down, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to actually remove the fuse box as of right now never removed one of these before all right so this is as far as i can get this unless i unplug everything inside so i can't really see anything and i was hoping actually that this was damaged outside of that rubber grommet it looks like it's damaged more inside of the rubber grommet but let me set this up so i can yank everything out on this side can't figure out how to set it up so i guess i'll just do it all one-handed so pop the floor mat out got these beautiful huskies in here uh run out of memory on the camera so i have to address or address that soon but anyway this out i've uh, warmed this truck up quite a bit so that i wouldn't be hopefully not breaking nothing uh set this on our mat This here, there's a door. Take the door off. Gotta get this panel here, so lift up the weather strip. So that this is free. This tends to break. That's why I, that's why I like to warm it up. That there. There. Pretty tight. I mean if I open this. hands there we go that's one way to do it a little easier with two hands but that that was fast so yeah i mean i think i can get this out if i unplug some things so i've got the fuse box out and now we can see the massive single connector that's tucked away in here oh and with this out, I should be able to unplug this and eventually get this plug out of this section. So I got to go clear some memory on the camera. Let's go ahead and see if I can't uh, unplug this guy here. Let's see how to do this. I'm not sure, but I think you push here. As 
super connector. Let's see here, get that out. It's still tight. What happens next? Am I missing something? There we go. All right, plug out. And we're very close to being able to uh, pull this harness through. There. All right, I had to unplug a couple more things. Let's see what's up though. Is this it? Um, I got it back some more. Uh, that's pretty far back. I now I've got it right where I want it. So I'm going to open this up. It's just tape. It's just a zip tie and some tape. And see if I can't figure out what the heck I did. Give me a second. Here is the damage exposed. So this secondary part that kind of kind of curves up. You can see the wires have some some damage there. So I've got to figure out what to do next. How do I want to address this? Some of these have just uh, the sheathing torn on them, no copper damage. And those will just get tape. And all the damage is like right up in, underneath this rubber boot. So it's not going to get a lot of corrosion or anything. That's probably the most damage there, that red one. That one there is probably the most damage on that red one right there. Uh, we'll have to take a good look at this and see how much of that copper has really been exposed. So I'm going to pull this back and see what the heck's going on here. So here is how everything turned out. I use a number of different uh, techniques, I guess you can call it here. So if there was more than one or two strands of copper I just cut the whole connection and use a butt connector to me that is the cleanest of all the things I've done this here a little bit of tape just barely a scratch in the sheathing didn't even go through it so I just put a little tape on it this red one right here if I can get this camera in there any closer let me see if I can get it in there this red one right here the cut Spliced, just a standard connection, marine grade shrink. This black one, just sheathing damage. So I slid a shrink tube up the middle. Just re-glued it, pretty much. Put one slit two shrink tubes up the middle. And then just worked the seal and re-glued the end so it became one again. And... Uh, then shrunk that on there and it seems like it's holding pretty good uh, these are marine grade so they all pretty much glue down did that here did that here for sheathing damage and uh, this little blue one I cut it and reconnected it it was like hanging on by a thread and it only had a little bit of copper and I didn't want to come or take a chance there so that one got cut redone shrink tubed and uh, yeah, so a little bit uh, unorthodox for sure. We'll see what happens. I'm sure it's going to be fine because the truck was already fine. I just wanted to make sure that everything was good. I don't want to be having issues in a year. Exposed copper starts to corrode, and it probably would have been fine either, either way. I don't know if any of this was having communication issues or anything as it's pretty much uh, this little scratch there in the sheathing not all the way through or showing any copper. Uh I don't think this will have any issues because it's going to be inside of this rubber grommet. It should be fine. Otherwise, this entire harness is quite expensive. I mean, it's freaking everything. HVAC, everything. Butt connectors, which these are probably going to be so short and hard to reach. Honestly, though, on this truck, the pass-through wires, no, they come through nice and good for whatever reason right down by this plug so that's nice that the pass through wires are very nice um, on this end I don't know how they look 
from the truck end but anyway i guess i'll go ahead and get all this put back together and uh see how it all turns out and just like that we are done with the repair everything went pretty good and i'm happy that i was able to get through this i definitely learned you know quite a bit about you know the side of the truck by taking everything out i had the battery tray and I'll, I'll, i've taken that out before but going all the way down to the fuse panel taking out the bcm taking all these things out it really wasn't that bad i just took my time and worked through it so there is a pass through that you can use on this side of the truck but being the way uh that this is tucked back here in order to take advantage of this pass through you literally would have to take your fuse box out when in order to get the fuse box out you have to take out the battery tray it's not that hard and if you really wanted to pass a wire through there that's probably what you'd have to do and just doing this it really kind of made me realize that it's not hard to just pull that out so you can see both sides and see what you're doing and then just use a razor i didn't have a razor on hand so i tried to poke a drill bit through there and that was a terrible idea and basically what happened is because of the way uh this is tucked back here in order to get anything anywhere remotely near there it'd have to be pointing at a downward angle and by the time it goes through that nipple it's hitting your harness and then it was not a good deal because by the way by the time you get your drill bit through there and then pull it back out it basically closes the hole closes back up anyway so you end up just taking a razor, trimming this nipple off, and then it opens up a hole for you to pass through. And when I was in here, I just passed a wire through. I passed a four-lead control wire. So if I ever need a pass-through wire, all I got to do is tie into this. So for future lights, I probably I have four-lead on hand. I really should have a uh, wire with six conductors, not four. But if I, have to, if I ever want to change this wire out... I mean, I got to pull the battery tray and fuse box in order to really get at this, to get it at the right attack angle and all that. And you can pull, once you pull the battery box and the fuse box out, you can pull that back and you can work with it. So in the process of being in here, I finally got around to putting the plastic fender liners in. Huge, huge deal with these trucks to have plastic fender liners. So that's nice. And I did try to put my mud flaps on, but realized that I have the wrong ones. I have the ones that require a fender flare. You really can't notice too bad, but yeah, they are the wrong ones. So I'm going to have to reorder the OEM ones that don't have a fender flare. So I messed up there. But all in all, guys, the repair went well. I'm very, very, very proud of myself for doing it. I, I'm glad that I took a little break and did this on a day where it wasn't too cold because i am working outside as you can see the trailer's not here anymore because i finally put it in storage but uh working outside i was cold i was rushing and i was taking a necessary risk i didn't want to run to the parts store and get the uh razor blades because i was out of razor blades so anyway the job is done now it's been corrected and uh all the wiring has been re-insulated, so there will be no connectivity between any of the leads or any of the wires passing through that uh, pass-through. So anyway, my name is Sean. This is DS Trucks. See you in the next video. Over and out.